The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 16th Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Perseverance underscored. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Um, let's go take a look at the market. State. Well, first, I do want to hear from you. So you can reach out to us, 877-927-6648. Uh, if you can't call in, we understand. But you can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you put radio show question, that would be helpful to me to sift right to you your email out there and of course in our tiger's den any ping will do so uh, let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful wednesday of course this is tiger financial news network currently we have uh, most of the indices slightly in the uh, red the semis are not slightly in the red they're off a little about one and a quarter percent down 20 points out here uh the dow's off 11 s p7 the nasdaq off 33 points out here wilshire's off uh, 82 points spot volatility trade down to 1391 gold's up 10 bucks Silver's up a nickel. Lightsweet crude is up about 70 cents out there. Natural gas is flat. Treasury bonds are up about 12, 30 years, up 12 ticks out there, leading the charge the upside. Good old tech data. Tech data. That takes me back into the 1980s, uh, early 80s, when I had a... Uh, was in the microcomputer uh, business, yeah, the personal computer business out there. Tech Data was one of my suppliers located, I don't know if they're still located, over in the uh, Clearwater, St. Pete area out there. But they're leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, so nice to see. Uh, you've got Booking Holdings up 11 bucks. Um, Amazon is up 8 uh, Rieta Pharmaceuticals up about 9 To the downside, you've got uh, ServiceNow, NOW is a ticker symbol. They're off 23 bucks or nearly 9%. Workday is is off 22 bucks, 12 percent. Mercado Libre down 16. So you got some stocks that are certainly moving to the uh, downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. And the first question comes in from. Uh, let me see here. Let's get to that. Then we'll get to the because uh, you know you, you spend the time to write in uh, or call in. I want to get right to your stuff. Uh, when time permits, could you revisit XBI? This is for uh, Tony. So Tony, we're going to uh, revisit XBI. You're looking for. The profiles. So you want to understand what the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. That's where we like to begin. Anyways, when we look at an instrument, especially a stock, and so or ETF in this case here, this is the S and P Biotech ETF XBI is. Price is trading in between its daily profiles. It's bullish in structure, meaning the center of that box where both buyers and sellers reside at 7571 is closer in proximity to the bottom which is 73.89 versus the top at 80.26. So just in taking a look at this chart out here, we're going to say that what XBI wants to do is get up to 80.26. Now, Lee Corso, if he uh, just simply, if we change uh, faces out here, Lee would say not so fast. The reason Lee would say not so fast is, hey, he'd say, Steve-O, aren't you looking at the weekly set of profiles out there? Tony wants to have all of the profiles and so Tony, the tiger, if we take a look at it, the uh, bottom of its weekly box is 78.85. Price is trading at 78.83. Therein lies your resistance. I don't know if you're long or if you're short out here, Tony, but therein lies your resistance level. Now, closing over that area on a... Uh, at the end of the week would then say that 8026 to 8082 would be your price target 8082 is the center of its bullish structured weekly profile now that is where the rally could end uh, in bearish type markets counter trend rallies will typically end as they're trying to get back into the box or on a bear structured box price will make its way or can make its way up to the center line from a monthly standpoint price is trading in between its profiles it also is bullish and 
structure. And all that that means is if we were to see a close below 71.74, it could signal look out below. Uh, but for Tony, we'll also take a look at Stevie's white background charts out here. We can see that um, uh, anything new. We know that XBI bottom with the TD setup nine count out here. Did that on October 3rd. Price been moving higher since then. But it is forming a potential for a Gartley sell pattern out here. Now, a Gartley pattern is going to have an A to B equals CD. It's a fancy way of talking about the A to B equals CD pattern. You can see that price, the price projection for the one to one is 79.35. Now, I'm not saying to sell or exit XBI if price hits 79.35 out there. That just is the one to one price projection area. Only 60% of the time, give or take out there, uh, does does the 1 to 1 A to B equal CD complete that pattern. But the reason it's a Gartley out here, well, one, you can see the extended downtrend off of the September high, September 17th or so, all the way down to those lows on October 3rd when it made that TD set up nine count bottom out there. And because of that, uh, you know, it, it's time to be cautious, careful. If there were to be some type of bullish reverse, bearish reversal candle out here that would form over the coming sessions on a daily basis, uh, that could signal that XBI is getting ready to pull back out there. That's what the daily time frame chart shows us. So nice bottom pattern. Uh, it certainly suggests that price can, can move up. Weekly is saying, hey, not so fast out there. In the daily, we took a further look at it. It might be forming a Gartley sell pattern out there. So just keep your stops tight here on the weekly chart. Price coming down. Down and testing the breakout support level of 76.84. Here it says price needs to clear Stevie's red line at 79.49 in order to have further upside movement. If it can do that, that could bring in play 87.70. And on a monthly time frame chart here for Tony, as we finish out XBI, what do we see? We see, um, you know, the, the move lower in December of last year found support at its second breakout area, and that was at 64.30. Looks like it almost did it really to the T. But in order for XBI to really get its monthly footing, we're going to have to see continued closes above what is now priced at 86.93. Stevie's green line, we're well away from there. So in summary, you've got the profiles, Tony. Uh, watch 78.85. A decent close above that this week says further prices to the upside. Also watch the daily candles. If you see a bearish reversal candle out there, it's signaling that the move higher may be over. So hope that that helps you out. And of course, folks, I want to hear from you too. So let's go take a look at the general markets out here. General markets, why is the market stalling? The market primarily stalling because of resistance. We're just taking a look at resistance areas. Where's the resistance levels inside the S&P 500? Well, from based on the ES mini chart out here, we can take a look at the top of its daily profile. That level is 29.95. We had a slight close above it at the close of the contract yesterday. You and I know that we like to see follow through. No follow through today. Does that mean go ahead and sell the S&P 500? No. You want to see some type of pattern. When we take a look at profiles, they're really not patterns. They're just simply the markers out here where buyers and sellers are. This is, it's probably, it's we, we, we probably should whisper to ourselves because the data that we're using out here, it's almost as if we have an unfair advantage. However, I learned a long time ago. An unfair advantage is a good thing to have. So let's go ahead and keep these profiles and let's scream about them because they are helpful to you and I in understanding what the markets are communicating to us. So right now, 29.95 is a key level. Hey, at the end of the day, which I hate that uh, sentence, so to speak, uh, out here, but by day's end, that one I can live with. If you do see a close about 29.95 today, says the ES Mini wants to head up to 30.32. The Dow, the key level to be watching there is 27042. Two instruments that will help us navigate what the markets want to do. But right now, just a normal retracement. We're going to go take a look a little bit deeper into the S&P. We come back to the screen. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So as we were going into that break, we were taking a look at the uh, TAS market profiles, equity futures contracts, uh, just to assist us in understanding what the market is doing here. And, uh, and, and and I mentioned really our focus here is just understanding what the ES and the YM are doing, the Dow and the S&P 500, because price was up at resistance yesterday. So nice moves that we've had, but resistance is resistance. And uh, so right now we've got price pulling back a little bit. Inside the NQ, that's not the case. Uh, its resistance level is 78.44. Price is still well above that area, and it's signaling to you and I that the NQ wants to move up to 80.71, and the Russell 2000 equity futures contract price is in between. It's um, equally balanced. Uh, TAS market profile, support being 1508, resistance being 1548 out there. So it's not really helping us to determine what the markets want to do or why they're doing what they're doing today, uh, but resistance. So it's just, you know, it's a, been a big race to get up to these levels out here. And uh, so it's just taking, uh, it's taking a little bit of a breather. We don't have any kind of sell signals yet to speak of. If we look at the daily chart, for example, for the ES Mini, uh, we're going to see that it is in day number four, potentially day number four of a TD9 count. No top that is in place out here. Uh, previously, we saw wave number seven in a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top that was back in July out here. Of course, we saw the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom inside the ES Mini back in August. Uh, the highs that were made out here in uh, September were just really a retest of a prior high out there. We're not up there just yet. So we have a lower high, but nothing here that signals that, uh, that this is the top. Now, we can see that in 
In the past couple of days, Stevie's red line turned green. You and I know that the phenomena associated with that is that price and that red line are going, or green line at this stage here, are likely going to meet each other. It could be a combination of price moving sideways and the oscillator and change line moving higher. It could be any any number of different combinations out there. But for market to pull back and test that uh, area would be normal. That would just be a normal retracement out there. Now that's priced at 29.60 when we're, we're priced at 29.87 actually in the market out here. So you got about a 20 point spread. Um, and uh, and, I, and I'm not saying it's going there this afternoon or anything along those lines. But, but when we take a look at the NQ, in the case of the NQ, it doesn't have to perform that test. May I take that back? That does have to perform that test. So the NQ's really got the same picture going on out here. And I can't tell you why it unfolds the way that it does. I just know that it does unfold that way. And that really helps us as a, another tool or indicator to to uh, to gauge what the message of the uh, markets is. It's the Dow that doesn't have to do it. There we go. So it's the Dow. I know it's one of the equity futures contract. The reason why I say the Dow doesn't have to have another test, that's the key, another test of Stevie's green line is because the day that the uh, Stevie's red line, green line, was changing colors, it's also the oscillator and change line, we had price actually testing that level. And that was just three, four trading sessions ago. So what the Dow is communicating to you and I is that it's ready, it's preparing to run up to the 27,262 area. It's earnings out here. There's lots of things that can easily propel that. Of course, it needs to first contend with 27,042. Okay, so I don't want to belabor that, but I just cer certainly wanted to make sure that you and I uh, discuss that if we take a quick peek at the New York Stock Exchange out here, bottom panel shows us that the spot volatility index is well below its 50 day exponential moving average. That's actually priced at 1651. It's trading at 1395. The uh, second panel from the bottom is the advanced decline oscillator line for the uh, New York Stock Exchange. That is above zero. If I take a look at the advanced decline line out here, um, I'll add that. It's going to be in panel number two now. Is it panel? What did I do? Oh, I, I, I grabbed the wrong thing. That was, sorry about that. Let's grab the advanced decline line out here. And yesterday was at a new all-time high. Let me see, is today also at a new all-time high? Uh, or no, so today, today's just slightly lower. But yesterday, a brand new all-time high. Now, generally speaking, with the exception of one instance over the course of... 35, 40 years of data out here inside the New York Stock Exchange, what I can share with you is there's never, and even in that one instance, there's never been a market crash. There's never been a bear market that started like this with the advanced decline line at new all-time highs out here, and that's what took place yesterday. But that being said, that doesn't mean that the market is not preparing to make its next high. It's just don't think that this next high is going to be some type of cataclysmic event, if that is even a word out there. Now, what do you mean, Steve-O? You know, kind of be straight here. So it looks to me like what the markets want to do, what they're communicating to us, upper resistance, we took a look at those two uh, uh, equity futures contract, ES and Y and, and the uh, NQ, and, no, and the Dow and the YM, when we really took a look at the Dow equity futures contract, we know that Stevie's test of its oscillator and change line has already taken place. So it really should be able to break above that resistance and move higher. We gave you the breakdown level. That being said, then, we still need to be careful. Why do we need to be careful? Well, one of the reasons that we should be careful, as soon as I can find it, is this. So we just took, took a look at the spot volatility index. That is now at the top panel of your screen out here. The bottom panel is the S&P 500. And what you see on the top screen, the top panel, the red line is the spot volatility index, closing prices because it's a line. The other lines that are out there, the blue ones are a Bollinger Band. That is a 50 to 1 setting. Most Bollinger Band settings are a 20 with a 2 standard deviation out here. But just simply for the spot volatility index, I've found that using a 50 to 1 setting provides provides us with a lot of assistance in understanding what the market is communicating to us. The, the little uh, fuchsia, I think it's fuchsia, is that what the color would be? Uh, maybe purple, Barney color out there is at 1651. So there's your 50-day exponential moving average. Okay, so if you take a look at this, just before we came on the air, I said, hey, let me, just, uh, uh, let me just try to visually show you what it is that I'm taking a look at. And what you will notice out here is when the spot volatility index gets to or below 
the bottom of that 50 to 1 reading, it's a signal to us of an impending top that should form. It doesn't tell us what the extent of the decline will be, and it's not to be used as a timing tool, because if it were, then we would go short the market today. Now, that still could be a right option because I don't know what's really going to happen. It's 125 in the afternoon at 126, right? I can't control what happens next. That's why you and I use position sizing whenever we enter a trade. And position sizing means we have done all of our work before we enter that trade. We've identified our stop. We've identified our target. We know what our reward risk is on it. We figured out exactly what we're going to risk, which is typically 1% or less of our working capital out there. And it tells us exactly how many shares to buy based upon a very simple formula. And that is position sizing. And if you use position sizing, whenever you enter a trade, you're going to do just fine, even if the trade doesn't work out. Because what you're at, what's at risk is really just one percent of your working capital. Now, granted, stops can be jumped, you know, in overnight action, and your risk can go from one percent to maybe one and a half or two. That's stuff we can't control. And when that happens, you just simply close out the trade, come back, reevaluate it, uh, and go from there. But now, getting back on track here, okay. What If we take a look at these little rectangular shapes out here, the bottom panel being the S and P, the top panel being the spot volatility index, and you will see as the spot volatility index is trading below that 50 to 1 Bollinger Band area, it's telling us of a top that is trying to form. This could take weeks, as you can see on this chart out here. So price should move higher into resistance, and then we should see the next sell-off, so to speak. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Doing this great, Steve. Uh, how about yourself? I'm doing well. And so we're going to take a look at U.S. Steel. Uh, our, tell us what you're doing and uh, how we can assist you. I had a specific question in regards to um, I have a swing point down around 10, 16, 17. Okay. Did it hit on? Um, I have the 28th of August with about 12 million shares, and then on um, September 23rd. Yes. I think it. So that on the August it was 1016. On September it was 1017. That one had yes. 16 million. And on October 9th, broke that with 34 million shares. So it seemed like to me that there's a potential there that the thing could do a AB equals CD down to around seven. I just wanted to see if you kind of saw the same type of thing and what you see in it. Yeah, so, you know, what Brent was referring to, folks, and I drew a yellow line uh, from the uh, swing point that he was referring to again, the August 29th level, and and so uh, so he's laid that out. And while well, he was also doing there, Brent was taking a look at the weekly time frame to see what volume was. So August 26, he had volume of 56 million, and last week it was 115 million shares out there. Um, when we take a look at profiles, interestingly enough, even though you had that big push uh, last week volume-wise into that swing point, uh, price did manage to close back above the bottom of its weekly profile. So in essence, support held. Now, typically when volume pushes into us, when, when, when you have price pushing it to a swing point with volume, doesn't tell us, what, and especially what here when it hasn't broken the swing point, uh, tells us that price is likely to go back and retest that level out there, um, and that's how I that's how I would use the use the volume and the swing point analytics. Of course, when we see a swing point broken with volume, we say it's more confirmed that the A to B equals CD pattern would uh, play out there. It's not a guarantee, though. But in the daily chart, price is consolidating between 10.52 and 11.55. That's the uh, bottom and top of its uh, top of its profile out. Here. Here. For the last month, the last four specific weeks, any rally inside of U.S. Steel has found resistance at 11, around the 1188 area. And that's the center where both buyers and sellers are comfortable with price, believe it's fairly valued for a weekly time frame. So if U.S. Steel is going to move to the upside, you need to see a close first above 1188. Now, 1188 would also take you above the current daily profile out there. And the question should be, is there any other signals out here. And if we take a look at the daily time frame chart for U.S. Steel, Brent, what we're really going to notice is on October 11th, you got what equated to a bullish reversal candle. Now, that candle required three candlesticks to form to create that uh, bullish Three River Morningstar pattern. And what Price was also doing in U.S. Steel at that time was pushing lower, doing it with less relative energy, creating that Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom out here. So it is trying to bottom. It's not the first time that it has bottomed with this pattern. If we go back and we take a look at that August 28th time frame when price had first pushed down with volume, that swing point, it was also pushing lower with less relative energy. And it was the following session which was the bullish reversal signal, which was the gap to the upside. So that was your confirmed buy signal, and also price had closed above Stevie's red line. Turns out, as we now take a look at the chart here, price continued moving higher until it got to count number or bar number nine of a TD9 count. So that was the topping signal. Price then went ahead and pulled back to its breakout area, and that was at 1048. Uh, we did see recently over the past several days a break of that level, but the break of that level on October 9th, even though it was with volume pushing lower, uh, we're still doing it with less energy. So which pattern is more important to us? The fact that it was pushing lower with volume or the fact that it was pushing lower with or without volume? 
and doing it with less relative energy out there. I think it is the latter that is the most important signal to us out here. So right now, U.S. Steel has, we'll have to call it a cautionary buy signal. Why? Because even after forming that and having that nice wide-ranging bar on October 11th, price found resistance right at the top of its daily profile, which is 11.55 out here. So, you know, you've got a bottom signal, price is consolidating out here. If I go look at a weekly time frame chart, just to look for some additional signals out here, the weekly time frame chart uh, also shows that price has been moving lower, doing less relative energy. And in this case here, this takes us back to the week of uh, August 30th. And August 30th, that was a hammer candle. So you've got the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal, bullish reversal candle on August 30th. The very following week, September 6th, also another bullish reversal candle. That's the bullish engulfing. And so you've got a lot of signals here that, that at least suggest that U.S. Steel is really trying to form a bottom on its daily and its weekly time frame chart. The monthly, not so much. The monthly, we don't have well, prices below. It's all of its profiles out here. And as we pull over the monthly time frame chart, I don't have anything to suggest that a bottom is in place just yet. Let me just check the wave count out here. No. The, the monthly chart is suggesting price wants to perhaps get back in tag 852. And that's its real breakout, which takes you back into uh, March, it looks like, of uh, February of 2016 out here. Uh, so that's what the charts say. So let's try to summarize this here. Your question specifically was about the volume push to the downside. And I would, and I'm not trying to discount it and say it's not important, but I do believe that the more important uh, pattern out here is that Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern where prices are moving lower and doing it with less relative energy. It actually tells you and I that the move lower is not real. Now, that's kind of a, a metaphor, so to speak, right? Obviously, it had to be real, but it's not real from the standpoint of a breakdown that's going to occur. And then the real proof of that was we have seen continued closings above the bottom of that bullish structured weekly profile. So I'm not suggesting that U.S. Steel is a gigantic buy here, but it is absolutely trying to form a bottom. And whether it's the bottom that formed on that last push with 115 million share, or was no, it was 34 million shares to the downside on October the 9th out here, or not. Um, what we haven't seen is a break of resistance to suggest the change in trend. And so that's going to be, for me, I'd have to say that would be a close above 1172. Yeah, and then I guess if it were to break below that support level and stay below there, then that would. I guess further kind of go the direction I was thinking of, you know, that yes. it could, and, and, yeah, okay. Yeah, and 8.50 and 8.52. And so, you know, we can't rule that out because the longer term time frame chart, the monthly, um, you know, can be the larger influencing pattern that is out there. And that may be the signal from the standpoint that we haven't been able to see U.S. Steel actually take out a key level of resistance. I look, it did on one day. It was back on October the 1st. There was some move above resistance, but the very next day there was no follow through. Price got right back down inside that uh, profile box, the top of which was 1155. But it's definitely signaling both on the weekly and on the daily time frame that it is trying to form that bottom out here. I guess it's one worthy of just keeping an eye on here and just absolutely as usual. And yeah, see what no. happens with it. We did yeah. have another aftershock yesterday. On that. And it's funny because when you've already had a decent size earthquake, your nerves are a little, you know, on edge. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, well, well. Uh, glad, to, glad everything is okay. Oh yeah, it's fine. Again, it just kind of gets your nerves break. a little bit. But <laughs> you bet. Hey, good to talk right. to you. Ben. Thank you very much, Steve. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. For Peter in the Tigers Den, we're going to go take a look at the uh, Japanese yen out here. So, Peter, here's the uh, daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame for the yen. And uh, these are this is the currency pair. These are its market profiles. We can see that price is above the top of its daily profile. That's 108. Uh, and price is running right in a resistance uh, at the at its weekly profile, which is 108.83. So, if a further rally is to occur, what you should see is the uh, is the uh, Japanese yen, the U.S. dollar currency pair, close close above on a weekly basis, 108.83. From a monthly standpoint. What we have here is price is trading with inside the profiles. Now, daily profile we said is trading above the top of its box weekly into the top of its box. If we look at the other daily chart out here, just to sense any other kind of patterns out here, we can see that today is going to be bar number six of a potential TD setup nine count. The last time that the Japanese yen topped out here, and I'm going back to the September 18th time frame, that was with a TD nine count pattern. So it suggests that we should uh, be uh, uh, keep our eyes out for a potential top. If we take a look at how the Japanese yen bottomed, it was with a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. Price was moving lower, doing less route of energy. Brent and I just spent some time taking a look at that pattern on U.S. Steel on its daily and its weekly time frame chart. When these patterns arrive, we really pay attention to them. This is how markets will make bottoms. Not every market bottom is made with this pattern. It, the point is, when it does show up, it is a real helpful tool for you to understand, like to play the liar's poker game, you know, you put the dollar bill on your head, only you know exactly what is inside your dollar bill, too, uh, the serial numbers out here. Let's not get into liar's poker. Uh, then, after that TD set up nine count, Peter, that formed out here in September, price pulled back, eventually came back, and came close to testing the breakout area at the 106.33. But this 
this still suggests that it wants higher price. Now, where is it going to head to with regard to higher price out here? Look, it could be an A to B equals CD to the upside. If we start from the bottom of that um, 108.48. There we go. If we start from the bottom of that Rose Momentum indicator uh, up to our B point, which was the TD setup nine count, and then into the retracement down towards the breakout support level, which was at 106.33, it got to 106.48. The one to one A to B equals CD out here uh, would give you a price projection of 110.5. Maybe 111.5 out here, the 111.272. So we don't know at this stage, but everything looks like price wants to move higher. But you and I know that in order for that to occur, price on a weekly basis is going to have to close above 108.83. We don't have a guarantee that it's going to do that. Everything is set up in order to be able to do that. If that can occur, remember we took a look at an A to B equals CD pattern on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame would suggest that the Japanese yen could get up to 111.90 out there. 111.90 is where the Japanese yen most recently on a weekly basis broke down. So that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, Japanese yen. If I look at the monthly time frame chart, our other one, what we're going to see out here is that price is below Stevie's red line. But the color changed uh, just a couple of months ago and that suggests that we should see price and it meet up and that would be at the price point in the 109 and uh, change level out there so there is your japanese yen i know you were looking for information on a head and shoulders pattern out here basically and this is a technical term folks i suck at figuring out head and shoulder patterns out here. Just basic, that, that is a true statement. So my apologies, it's just not a pattern that I have spent any time on um, trying, to, trying to figure out when is really the right time to buy or sell and so forth out there. But I think these other tools are just as helpful for you and I at understanding what the market is communicating to you and I. So I hope that that helps you out. We also have a request inside the Tiger's Den to go take a look at Royal Gold, I believe it is. RGLD, and uh, the question is, uh, is this a, did this generate any kind of a buy signal this morning? So we take a look at Royal Gold. Here's what we know. Again, just start with the uh, same uh, set of uh, factors. You've got your daily profiles. Price is below that. Not necessarily good. Uh, and the weekly profile price is trading in between its range. Bottom and the top hasn't reached the bottom. 112.57 would be that area of support. And the monthly chart out here, John, the top of support is at 92.45. So not really assisting us there. So the question is, is there some other type of bottom signal inside of Royal Gold out here? So as we take a look at it, one of the things we don't like is that price is now clearly below where it had recently broken out. Now, when I say recently, I mean October, I'm sorry, August 20th, 2019, uh, when it was generating its TD setup nine count, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It was the Rhodes momentum indicator pattern that identified the top. The actual high out there was September 5th. The bearish reversal candle formed on September the 6th out there. Price did what? It pushed back to where it was supposed to, which was support, 121.52. And since then, it's just kind of been dancing around. But yesterday's move lower, not so good. We take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. There is an A to B equals CD pattern. If we take a look at it, let's see where it's at in, uh, in relation to that. Let's see, 131.53. 131.52. There we go. So 131.53. Close. No cigar just yet on the one-to-one -one extension of that pattern, which would be 113.45. No bullish reversal candle today. So nothing to suggest to me that the uh, Gartley buy pattern, because that's what that would be here, has completed. So that's what the daily time frame chart is showing us at this stage. Let's go take a look at the weekly, because on the weekly chart, price was trading in between uh, its market profiles out there. 112 to 131. And as we open up the weekly time frame chart out here, what we're going to see is we're going to see another Rose Momentum indicator from a weekly standpoint. You'd need to see a close above 127.71. You're trading at 117, so that's a 10-point move out there. But that's what you would need to see in order to say that you're free to run to the upside. But this is more intermediate term uh, style. If you look at when Royal Gold on a weekly basis bottomed, it was back here in November of 2018 
Canadian Roads Momentum Indicator bottom piercing candle. So it had everything there. If Royal Gold has not bottomed from a long term standpoint, an immediate term standpoint, this is suggesting to you and I that it wants to pull back to 8406. Remember, we took a look at the daily Roads Momentum Indicator top price pushes all the way back to breakout support. No different here from a weekly standpoint. So this thing over the long haul, which could mean many months out here, October, November, December, January, what Royal Gold could be doing is heading down to the 8406 level out there. And if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here for Royal Gold, how did it form its high most recently last month as an example? That was your TD setup nine count pattern. And so what price should do on the longer term basis is first target Stevie's green line. That's at around 108.56 right now. And if on a monthly basis we see royal gold close underneath that, it is suggesting that price could pull back all the way to 73.51. It is not out of the question. So my answer, John, is the monthly chart has a very, very valid topping pattern. So too does the weekly. And on the daily, I just don't have any kind of bottoming signal. Short term, maybe it's a good play out here. But beyond that, I would need some more information and some type of bottoming signal. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. The two-minute countdown is on. John in Sarasota is asking, is today a one-day event inside of the uh, gold contract? You've got gold trading up 950, 1492. John, if you take a look at just simply the short-term time frame chart out here, short-term being 30 minutes uh, time frame chart, you can see that uh, gold had bottomed yesterday at 1130 with a TD setup nine count. I remember we just took a look at world gold and to the upside it's nine count pattern out here so it doesn't matter what time frame we use these patterns work the same out here so there was yesterday's bottom we saw price move higher and then this morning at about 8 30 we saw price push lower and as it was pushing lower it was doing it with less relative energy just think of the uh u.s steel stock that brent and you and i looked at on the daily and the uh, weekly time frame out here again trying to bottom this is how markets will form bottoms out here maybe not the first time maybe not the second time but it's it's giving you that 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 unfair competitive advantage so to speak to understand what the market is doing so price was pushing lower doing with less relative energy there was no time to get onto the gravy train because that was one huge bar at 9 a.m that pushed gold prices higher now what we have is we've got a new profile that's formed. We also have on the 30-minute time frame, Stevie's oscillator and change line turned from uh, green to red out here. But as that was taking place, price was already testing that. So we're not going to say that price has to test that. But to answer your question, John, you've got a 30-minute bearish structured profile out here. If gold can close above 1495.50, that's the top of its 30-minute profile, you should expect gold to reach 1499.50. That is where price broke down on its 30 minute time frame is it a one hit wonder i don't know instead i'd rather just navigate what the markets are communicating to you and i short term and other time frames out there to help us understand what the market is doing out here and yeah it was kind of a double bottom out there tucker but the other patterns i think were more helpful to you and i to understand what it's doing out here longer term in order for gold to have found some type of significant bottom, it's going to need to close above at least 1504. And it's not there right now. Hey, folks, stay tuned. I believe David White's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. So have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for being here.